Hey guys, I'm on this side today. Uh, last time uh, Zach and I did the uh, the Porsche 911 Carrera 4S together, seems a lot of you were like, hey, you should do more videos together. So here we are, 2016 Camaro 2SS convertible, and this time Zach's driving and I'm over here. So uh, where should we start? For our last review ever before we die in before a pile we die. of fire? Yes. Um, I think we should start with the features of this thing because it comes with a bucket load of stuff. True. Standard, but we have to we have to asterisk that by saying standard is the 2SS model. Right. So you're kind of paying up front, but you do get quite a lot of stuff. And we also have to prerequisite this with we've both driven a 2SS manual coupe. So even though this video is a convertible automatic, a lot of the things will apply to both cars and we'll try and True. specify if there are differences from one to the other. It should be pretty obvious, actually. Yeah. Uh, so 2SS Coupe, you get the uh, the LT1 engine. It's 450 horsepower. Uh, this has the eight-speed ZF gearbox. Um, the, the manual is standard with active rev matching. You get a limited slip diff. Mm -hmm. uh, you get dual zone climate control. And then uh, you also get power seats. Power seats both sides, heated cooled seats both sides, heated steering wheel which I used this morning and heats nice? up real fast. It's nice, okay. Uh, and then some other chachi stuff. And then uh, this ha this one has some options. Mag mm -hmm. ride, which is optional. Uh, the eight speed automatic, the dual mode performance exhaust, uh, ceramic white interior, the, the nav and the 20 inch wheels for a grand to, uh, base price, 48.3 as tested, 54.575. That is a pricey Camaro convertible. That is an expensive Camaro. Uh, most of the options are, I guess, the Magla Mag Ride is seventeen hundred. You want that? Which you definitely want. You want that? And then the Auto is sixteen hundred, which, you know, optional. I would yeah, say. I would really uh, call highly, that optional. Highly optional. Let's go for we'll, a drive, we'll Zachary. See how this goes. Sport mode, okay. Because this gives you touring, sport, track, and snow ice, which will probably happen a lot with this car. And the nav, I actually do recommend. It's good. Uh, the sport exhaust, I also recommend, because this yeah. car sounds the business. It's, I mean, I, I, that's pretty loud. And you said from outside, it's very loud. It is. This is a loud car. Sounds like a lot, but 
in in the past it's been way more it's been like 80 <laughs> in some cars in the past 80 yeah. so you can still feel what's happening at your fingertips you can still feel what's happening in the back tires it does the have grass. really good feel in general it's got, we, I mean, we did some drifting at willow that's another video it's coming out video the drift and, challenge but you immediately you, we both you feel the car is doing and you, as soon as it sets you're like okay and it just it does what you expect almost from a heavier coupe it just feels like like a 4,400 pound coupe. It's heavy, it's 39, 39 and change. Yeah, it's 30, 3,900 or so. It's definitely a touring car. It's not, yeah. it doesn't feel like it wants to be a track star or anything like that. And the auto, it, it's just not, it's not great. I it's, mean, it's, it's, a, it's a ZF8, but it's, it's not the ZF. GM makes you their said, own eights. Oh, you said ZF earlier. Did I say ZF? Yes, you did. Oh, if I did, I'm wrong. GM makes their own eight speeds. They I apologize. And, and, I, and we've, we've talked earlier that this is knocking on the door of Corvette pricing. And I think they, they, they get you when they turn this software down a little bit. Yeah. So it's, it doesn't feel like it shifts as fast as it could. I think it feels a little slower shifting than the ATS did, actually. It does. And it's like, this thing, it's 55 grand is a lot of money for a yes. Camaro that isn't a Z28, that isn't a ZL1. And so, on the one hand, there's like, if you look at a feature list, it's like, yeah, all the features are there. On the other hand, you know, people talk mad shit to me that my Focus RS interior isn't worthy of a $40,000 price tag. That interior is nicer than this interior from a material standpoint. This is all hard. Everything around here is hard. And so from a, from a material standpoint, if this is 55, for sure the Focus is 40. like a $42,000 interior in a car that's 55. It's not to say it isn't like nicer than it's been, but there's a lot of hard, 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 hard points, like touch points that are, that this should be softer and it just kind of isn't. And it, uh, what I've noticed with, with GM is that they think the solution, they think there's only two options for interior, plastic or leather. So they'll, they might cover this in leather and, you know, they'll give you an upgraded uh, price and whatnot, but it's, I wish they experimented more with plastics the way with even soft, Hyundai or softer Porsche, to, like a variety of touch, materials, or yeah. even the fake piano black, like something that looks different than just those two options. Because what I figured is this car has all the stuff on paper you want. Like, yeah, it really does. It's got a great chassis. It's got a good engine. Good power. It's good. And, yeah. Good amenities. Wi-Fi. I mean, we have all the stuff. Even even if you option up a Mustang, you can't get like the heated, cooled seat standard. You can't get a lot of stuff. But it's that the sit in moment. Yeah. You get in and you just go, uh huh. Right. Because it's certain things are done so well, like the buttons for the climate control and the turning the vents to it, like that's a really nice solution. Right. It's clean. And then, like, eight inches from it is a hard dash upper that, like, doesn't really fit perfectly and there's a big gap in the door. And you kind of go, well, they tried so hard there. What happened? You know, but. For a four-seat convertible, from a driving dynamics perspective, mm -hmm. it's you know south of a Bentley or something. It's kind of the best we've seen. It's yeah, and in, in the Bentley will be a different experience. That's more yeah. of the experience side. This is the driver side. Of the yeah, and it's four times the price. Also, it, it does is. need to be said we haven't driven a Mustang convertible recently, so we, we're going to have to get one of those and, and, and compare that because that's really the big. All anyone cares about is, is it better than the Mustang? It's well, like, that's yeah, different. Let's, let's not, you know, let's not uh, get away from the fact that a lot of people are cross-shopping this car with a Bentley. Yeah. That is happening quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I had to give this car, I got, they dropped this thing off at my house. I live in Venice. I had it for one evening and I gave it to Zach because there's a thousand rental white Camaro convertibles running around Venice. And I was like, I, I, I can't drive this. I look like a tourist. I, I can't have to give it to Zach. <laughs> We're, I made a joke earlier that this car is either bought with lots of credit or lots of cash. And here's what I mean. I'm just trying to think of who, who's buying this car. It's someone who, who maybe they had a muscle car or they like, you know, they like the power. They want a little bit of luxury. And on paper, it looks really great. So you're, you know, you run the regional office for sports authority yeah. or something like that. You're not taking it to a track day or any of those things. 
but the competition is a 370Z, which yeah. doesn't have four seats. A BMW 428, which has a four-cylinder four engine. And the 435 is quite a bit more expensive. Very much. Or the Mustang. Mustang. That's so the, really it. So the Mustang starts at 41. I optioned it up to about 48, and it was pretty much on par with this as far as features go. But again, we have to drive it to really, yeah. really comment on the dynamics. But the Alpha chassis... I mean, it is really that good. It has transformed the. Camaro there's a lot. There's a, no. There's a lot of really good stuff in here. Like I like the gauge cluster. Like it's simple and clear. They didn't chotch it up too much. Um, the small steering wheel is a weird thing for me because like it's clear that they you they made the steering wheel smaller to give the impression of more direct steering. I did the same thing in my Corvette, and I'm I wouldn't be surprised if that steering wheel changed how the car felt more than whatever they did in the front suspension. You know, but at the same time, the steering is kind of heavy in parking lots. It's not adjustable the way the Mustangs is. Um, at least I don't think it is. I haven't found an adjustment for it. If it is, well, if you change the mode, it lightens it or or makes it heavier. But it's not as drastic of a difference no. as you get with the Mustang. Right. And the other thing is, like, the visibility in here is still really terrible. It's, it's better, but it's still it's not better, good. but it's still not good. It's still not. Good. Um, but no. overall, I think that we can agree the new Camaro. Is, is a very good value. Yes. Um, especially in coupe with a manual because we had this exact same car just with a hard top and a stick and it was $9,000 cheaper and than this so one. And so fast. And, and so fast. So much grip. Yeah. It was really, really impressive and, and I would say the Camaro Coupe 2SS is probably better than the equivalent Mustang in terms of performance. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think the Mustang is a better place to spend my time but if you want to know which is faster, uh, we can we can call it over here, Zach. Okay. We're back in town now. But uh, but oh, as Carlos Lago texts us through, uh, hi Carlos, through Apple CarPlay, which you get in here. So the new Camaro is good. It's very it's very good at its job. It's very good at its job. But if you really option it up, it becomes a very expensive car very quickly, mm -hmm. especially if you want the convertible. At which point, you might as well get a base Corvette because you get a removable roof with the base Corvette and you start at a much higher starting point uh, and, and you still get the same exact drivetrain in a much lighter package. Definitely. All right, well, we're in town and we're gonna end this video, but join us next time as Zach and I take this car to uh, the drift balcony at Willow Springs and we play a little game of drift horse. So let us know what you think about Zach driving because I'm gonna hand off duties to him for some other stuff. <laughs> See y'all later.